Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learning Tech Talks, where we are exploring the landscape of learning technology while cutting through the fluff to answer the questions you need to build out your digital learning ecosystem. Today, I'm joined with Michael Yaffe. He is the co-founder and CEO of Arist, and we're talking about text messaging education. How are you doing today, Michael? I'm doing awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, before we get into it, just like last week, we want to have a little bit of fun with it. So we talked about this before. So he's he's been preparing his answer, but it is Thanksgiving week. So the question of the day is, what is your favorite Thanksgiving food and why? Yeah, no, excellent question. Uh, I think it's probably sweet potato fries. Uh, it's kind of kind of an odd choice, uh, but I, I, I absolutely love sweet potato fries. And I was once a cont uh, contestant uh, for the Food Network. And I put like in, in my audition for the show, I, I made sweet potato fries and it worked out well for me. So, okay, wait, you were on the Food Network as a contestant on what I was, like I on was, a show? I was, um, so, so yeah, I, I was asked to be, I, I was asked to audition for the show and was invited to be a contestant. I couldn't make it last minute, which was unfortunate. Okay. Uh, but I, in my audition tape, I was like literally cooking sweet potato fries uh, for, for people on, on a camera. Um, so, yeah, it's, I, it's, it's one of my favorite dishes. So this is not your first media appearance then? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> very, like, very, are very, you a cook? Okay, this is, has nothing to do very with different learning audiences. technology. Yeah. I know, very different audiences. But I mean, do you do you cook or you do you like culinary stuff too? Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm a huge cook. Yeah. Okay, okay. So it wasn't just like, hey, I don't know, maybe I'll just be on a cooking show and make sweet potato fries. It's, it's been building for a bit. Yeah, in, in, in high school, I was, I had like, Three very diverging interests in architecture, uh, learning, and in cooking. So I, I, I stuck with the learning piece, uh, but uh, but yeah, but I, 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 love, I love cooking as well. So okay, but you still you still do cook? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, without a doubt. Okay, sweet potato fries. That I was I was not sweet potatoes, right? I thought that could be that could be an answer, but sweet potato fries. I that's not one I would have expected. That's cool. yeah, cool yeah. story. Okay. Um, all right. Well, so before we get into it, one of the things that I think is helpful for people to understand is, so people have seen my posts over the last week, Aris, text messaging education, um, things like that, you know, but what is Aris? Sure. Tell me um, a little so bit about it. Aris is the first text message learning platform. Um, so we help organizations of all kinds and, and you know, teachers as well. Uh, create, deploy, and assess text message-based courses. Um, okay. And text message courses consist of one one 1,200-character text delivered to the user every single day over the course of five to 30 days. Um, and, and you know, there's there's plenty of use cases. We've seen text message courses be successfully used for everything from sales enablement um, and compliance training and onboarding uh, okay. to, to just, you know, re reinforcing existing video courses and existing in-person courses. Um, so we, you know, it's, it's a very simple medium, but we found that it's an extremely powerful medium as well. Okay. Okay. So text messaging. Yeah. So, but you got your start, right? This wasn't, you, you weren't making sweet potato fries and then you right. just thought, you know what, text messaging education, forget the culinary arts. I'm going to build this platform. So tell me a little bit about that story, how, how you sure. got started. So, so my background is in the nonprofit space. Uh, when I was 15, I started a nonprofit organization called tile.org. Uh, which is now the world's largest conversation series. So we have about okay. 450 locations in 50 countries. Um, and one of our most successful locations was in the conflict zone in Yemen. Um, okay. And I couldn't understand, uh, this, this was probably near the end of my senior year of high school, I couldn't understand why we were getting 400 students to come to our events in Yemen, and we're barely getting 100 to come to our events in New York or Boston. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I quickly realized is that you know, in Yemen, the educational system hasn't been up and running for about four years. And um, and that's mainly because most of the students there didn't have any access to educational resources. Um, and so I was struggling to understand why they weren't just going on Coursera and, and watching video courses. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, I was, I was like, there's this great resource. There's um, all this free education out there. Why exactly. are people not just, just absorbing it? Exactly. And, and what I started learning was that um, only 25% of the evidence population has access to high bandwidth internet uh, necessary for watching a video course. And that was the same for, for you know, pretty much millions and millions of people uh, who, who don't have, you know, they may have a phone and they may have access to text messaging, but they don't have access to internet necessary for watching a video course or even downloading a book. 
Um, and, so, and so I started realizing that there was this huge gap in digital education. Um, I ended up working with a few professors from Babson College in USC to design the first text message course. And we were just curious to see if we could package you know, a semester long college course into like 30 texts um, and whether or not that was, that was even doable. Uh, to our surprise, it was very, very doable. We were able to package, you know, the essence um, and, and the key, the, you know, sort of, sort of the key exercises, the, the, the key points and concepts and case studies from a college course into 30 days worth of text. And we piloted it. Uh, we piloted that 30 day course with about 100 students at Babson, uh, UCLA and a few uh, high school students in Portland as well. Um, and the results were astounding, right? Even for an audience that wasn't located in a war zone, we had completion rates of 90, over 92% and satisfaction okay. rates of over 90%. Uh, people, people just loved the course. They loved getting a text every single morning um, about, you know, and, and, and what we found that was most interesting, the text before checking social media in the morning. Really? Um, yeah, which is, which is for, for a student, you know, for, for, for an audience of students, which was our initial pilot audience, um, that was astounding. So we started realizing that, that you, know, you know, we can reach students ar around the world who have limited internet access, but this is also a super effective medium for students domestically. Um, and after bumping into some research from Stanford and UPenn about the efficacy of, of text messages for positive behavior change, um, we began to realize that text message learning could have a significant effect in corporate training as well making corporate training significantly more effective, accessible, um, and, and, you know, the word that we like to use is completely frictionless. Okay. So, yeah, because I have to imagine, right, and we talked about this a little bit backstage before we went live, that, you know, there, there has to be some resistance or at least a little bit of skepticism around like, okay, but we have all this training over here and you're saying we can distribute it via text message. How, one, tell me a little bit more about what you found with that, but how, how has that gone or how have you overcome that skepticism? Sure, yes. Yeah. So, so what happened was we, you know, we started building up the sex message learning platform and uh, we were initially focused on, on, the, you know, on the impact market. So just working with nonprofits to deliver these courses. And um, a, a notable corporate training organization in the US reached out to us and was like, hey, like this is perfect for so many of our use cases. Um, and so that, that's sort of how we entered the corporate training space. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I mean, what we found is that, you know, to take something like compliance training, for example, right? Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll use I'll use sexual harassment training. Uh, and sexual harassment training is is vital, right? It, it, it's it's important for for creating a healthy, you know, coherent culture. Um, culture yep. Yeah, in, in workspace. And corporate, you know, the current solutions just often don't don't make the cut. Uh, most people don't really pay attention. Um, and, and there's, you know, there's a lot of content delivered all at once that doesn't meet the, the needs of, of learners, right? People don't have the attention span to, to watch that much content. They can't actually take the time to digest what, what they've learned. Um, and so by, you know, by sending like a 1200 character text with one case study, um, you know, that takes five minutes in the morning, uh, users can take the time to actually read, digest what they've learned, internalize it, practice it in the workplace. And then the next morning they'll receive their next text so they can move on to the next concept. Um, so, so that, 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 that's one of, you know, that, 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 that's just one example of, of, of sort of the power of the medium. Um, I think, I think the use cases that, that people are most interested right now, I, I think there's some natural skepticism, right? With, with yeah. text yeah. message learning, it's, uh, it, it, it is a scary thought to condense tons of content into a text and then text that to your employees. Um, but what we found is, is that, uh, reinforcement, you know, course reinforcement. So it's just delivering, you know, five to seven days worth of text after an existing video course or an existing in-person course it is a really, really um, easy way to both test out the medium and the efficacy of the medium without developing a full on 30 day course and, and replacing okay. some of your existing course content. Okay. And one of the questions that came in from, from Chris Barker, he asked, how big are the texts, which I think you hit on it. The, the max size for one of the texts is 1200 characters, correct? Sure. Yeah. And I think it's best. I think it's best if I show you as well. Yeah, uh, that works. Yeah, let me let me pull it up. Give me just a second. Um, awesome. All right. Let, let me know when, when, when you yep. guys can see my screen. Perfect. Yeah. So, so this is what a typical text looks like. Um, so, yeah, it's about 1200 characters. So that's two screen lengths. Um, and, and we, you know, we, we've done tons of research over the past year and a half 
to fine tune exactly how to design an effective text message course. Okay. Um, so that this is sort of the model that that we think is is pretty close to perfect. Um, so first step, you can send an image. Uh, an image slots in. It's optional, but it, it slots in right above this text. Um, you know, you have the course today and title. Um, so th this is an example of a financial literacy course uh, that that uh, a teacher in Canada developed. Um, so the way we see it is you have a you know a brief concept explanation or case study, and you can actually you can actually um, the, 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 there's a there's a lot that you can do in terms of explaining a concept or case study, especially if you, if you okay. have a learning designer that's really really good at condensing content. So explain the concept or case study, explain why this concept or case study is relevant, and then ask you know ask for a response. So AIR supports multiple choice questions, short answer questions, open ended questions, and and just general exercises. Um, so what, once somebody, you know, so, so as a learning designer, you plug in some ask for response. You can also include a link to more resources. And as a user, every single day, um, I can, you know, let's say you have a question, um, a multiple choice question about your company's privacy policy. As a user, yeah. I can just text back uh, my answer and I'm done for the day. One of the really, really interesting things about this medium this works by WhatsApp. We're one of the first major learning platforms to fully integrate with WhatsApp. Okay. Um, Facebook Messenger and SMS. And because we're delivering learning over a medium that's intimate and familiar to the user, you know, response rates are significantly higher and also the responses are much more authentic. Um, people are much more likely to respond in, 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 in a real way and deliver learning insights for, for the learning team that, that are really, really valuable. Okay. So, so yeah, just from a flow standpoint, so that, that makes sense in terms of, right. You, you get the, you get the text up to 1200 characters and it's designed to be engaging in that, right. They, it's not just, Hey, read this thing and you're done. The one of the objectives would be to say, okay, here's something, either go do something or, or, you know, here's some information that you should retain from this. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the other piece to going back to the 1200 character piece is, so it's 1200 characters, but it's not, you don't just get one text. The point of this isn't you're consolidating your entire course into right. one 1200 character text. Correct. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Is, is there a length of number of days that you found works? Is it, you know, Hey, or is it just based on the amount of content or the volume? You know, how, how do you determine how many days you end up breaking it into? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So, so the platform is, is, pretty flexible. You know, we can support courses up to 90 days. If you want, you can deliver one text a week over the course of a whole year. Um, but but what we found, the perfect course is about 15 to 20 days long. Right? So about about two to three weeks. Um, and and that, that's that's enough to cover most like harassment prevention courses, most compliance or onboarding courses. Um, you know, and it depends on the use case too. Uh, we've had a lot of a lot of clients interested um, in using AIRS for culture training. Right. Okay. So, um, you know, using areas to conduct like a, a 10 day course on the values of the company, for example. Um, and and, and we, we find that five to 10 days is, is probably the perfect size for that. OK. OK. So, yeah, because I was curious if you've seen, you know, at a certain point, is it just you've been getting the same text for so that people are just like, oh, yeah, like I'm done with it. I don't know if there's a drop off point, kind of like in analytics in a video where you can kind of yeah. see, yeah, people were in and then we they just fell off a cliff. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think after after three weeks, um, you know, people people need a little bit of a break. Okay. So how do you with that? Because I think this is you know one course. I can see you know how that fits, but I could also see the risk of if if you've got a ton of things, right? Let's say let's say an org says, yeah, we're going to do this thing. We're turning everything into text messaging courses, yeah. and now people are enrolled and they're getting tons of texts every day from all these different courses. It it could start to feel a little overwhelming. Now I wouldn't start to, it would, if I got, you know, 200 texts from all the compliance training I was in, I would start to ignore that. So how do you balance that? Like, Hey, it's a tool, but don't, don't necessarily just say we're turning everything into it. How do you, you know, figure out what that right line is? Yeah, no, that, that's an excellent question. So, so I'm actually, I'm enrolled in like seven courses right now. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling, you're a feeling bit. the pain <laughs> yeah. of like, okay, yeah. how many of these texts can I really read? Right, right, right. It actually, yeah, it, it hasn't been too bad. Um, you know, okay. I, uh, in, in the morning, I, I slot off like, you know, like seven, seven to, to 10 minutes to just read through my texts and do my exercises. So, it, it, you know, it, it's not terrible. Um, but yeah, I, I think we, we encourage companies to set an upper limit for how many courses users will be taking at a given time. Uh, we we, th we think you know we think four or five is is, is sort of the upper limit, um, and typically when when we work with companies we help them 
you know, evaluate where this will be the most impactful use case. Uh, okay. Right, right. So, so, so and, and where this can actually accelerate so, so, some sort of learning outcome. Um, okay. You know, what, 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 one, one example is that, you know, for, for onboarding, there's not a lot that can replace, right, in, yeah. in, in person onboarding experience. Um, but, but Eris can help augment that. Right? And, and for the first, yeah, and, and that, that, that's, that's really, really where we see ourselves starting off within an organization, right? And learning okay. augmentation. Yeah. Well, and I think, right, in our industry, I think that's a risk that I've, I've been in the trenches and have seen gone, you know, where you jump on one and you try and replace things and all you do is move yeah. one box from left to right instead of saying, hey, what, what components of this do we deconstruct and say, okay, let's, let's make this component text message education or e-learning, but then let's preserve this over here. So one question that came through from Rowena Hennigan was she said, so yeah, it's, it's bite-sized learning. I think I won't use the term micro learning because that one is, I'm like, yeah. Ugh. but it's, it's bite-size or snackables. That's the word I use. So I call them snackables, right? It's that. a learning yeah. snack. Um, and, you know, but can you see a summary of the total text somewhere? And I think I know the answer, just how it's kind of doing a conversation thread, but is that how you would then see, okay, maybe this is today's lesson or today's snackable, but if I want to look back to what I learned two days ago, you know, was, what, how would you go about doing that? Sure thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the way we see it right now is it's a conversation thread. So okay. um, if you want to go back, go back a few days, you just scroll up and you know, all, all the days are right there. Um, but, but what, you know, what we're also offering is you know, for, for, for students to request it, you know, they can just shoot us a, a text because um, our, our support team also reads reads a lot of text post course um, and, and then you know occasionally we can offer the full PDF of the course to, to the users so they have it for reference um, okay. but you, but usually yeah you, you just scroll up and, and all of your content is right there okay so it's keeping it in a conversation thread you're not getting a yeah. new message from a new a new number every day it's it's a thread that's then kind of building exactly exactly and, and what's great is that yeah um, what we often ask is users will just uh, mark their uh the contact um of the number of the course so each course has its own unique number and users will just mark the, the okay. contact as like you know here's my onboarding course or here's my compliance course if they accidentally delete the thread can they get it resent to them <laughs> yes yeah without it you can yeah. okay that's actually a really good that's a good question right because i'm like well, yeah, yeah i've done that where you're like delete oh no the whole thread <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yep yeah. Okay. Okay. So in terms of interactivity, Teresa, um, and actually a couple of people have asked this in terms of, you know, questioning, is there interactivity between, you know, the, so they get this question, can they ask questions back or is it, you know, how, how does that work? What type of interactivity is there? Sure thing. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I guess there, there's sort of, you know, two, two potential questions there. The first one is, is can students, you know, text back? Um, and, and yes, students can text back and, and as learning designer or the professor, um, you, you can see students, student okay, responses. Okay, you can see responses. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, you can see all responses. We, we, we give you an analytics dashboard um, where you can see user progress. Um, you know, you, you can see what, what users are, are responding to each day and to each question. Um, so yeah, we, we, we support that on the back end. Um, we're, 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 you know, in the long run over the next few months, we're building in a feature where as a professor, you can, you know, in in the platform text back um, and, okay. and then the user will automatically receive it uh, receive it as a text for now you know that, that that's technically pretty difficult um so yeah. for now you know if the user has a question should, you know you can just email them um and we, we give you the, the the email as well um and and then with regards to automatic feedback for, for students when, when uh you know in, in the interactivity um so one example is a multiple choice question right uh, okay. so so if, if a student replies b and the answer is a uh, this, the system will automatically tell the user, "Hey, that the answer is you know you got you got the answer wrong. Here's what it actually is." Um, and then uh, we're relaunching the platform on January 10th, and we're we're launching a lot of detailed feedback tools. Um, okay. So you'll be able to say, "Hey, you know you got the answer wrong. Here's what the right answer was, and here is why." And so you can put in like a few paragraphs worth of explanation as well. Okay. So right now, so right now in terms of, and you actually answered two questions that have come in. So that, oh, that's awesome. okay. extremely Perfect. helpful in terms of right now, in terms of the feedback, they can ask a question. You can see it. You, you can't 
in the tool respond back to someone, but you can get in touch with them if they have a question or they want to go further. That's that's on the roadmap right. um, where it is. And then in terms of the feedback on questions, there is some question level feedback that they can get in real time. And that's going to be more robust in 2020. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Gen okay. January 10th is, is when we plan. January that. 10th. Oh, yeah. All right. We're holding you to it. January 10th. <laughs> exactly. Always. I'm telling you in this industry, you got to be very careful about saying this is the day because people hold you to it. So that's awesome. Yeah. Our engineer is probably freaking out, but uh... yeah, he's like, did you just say that live in front of everybody? <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. So in terms of the platforms, because this is another one and it came up and, and we answered it, but I think it's also an important thing. So it's text messaging, but you're also integrated right now with Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. So still kind of that messenger concept, but again, kind of the other apps. Are there other apps that you're also looking at exploring in terms of, you know, I know I have a lot of folks um, that I've worked with in, in the China region who use WeChat. You know, I mean, there's there's other apps that people are Slack, things like that. Are you exploring other platforms or are you more focused on innovating with what the capabilities of the tool are? Yeah, yeah, no, without a doubt. I, I think within the next, our, our, our goal is to give the end user. So, so you know, what, if I'm an employee and I sign up for, for like an onboarding course uh, or a sales enablement course, I pick the time I receive my daily texts and I pick my platform. Right. Okay. Um, and so our goal is to give the, the employee as much flexibility as possible. So we're, we're building in WeChat integration and Slack integration, uh, hopefully in Q1 of 2020. Uh, okay. And and yeah, we, we think, especially for, for communicating with, with uh, employees and teams in China, uh, we think that's going to be really, really important. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah. So, so, so that, 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 that is on our road. Okay. And then another another question for you on this is, and you you talked briefly just now about it in terms of that. So, as a as an end user, right? As in my experience, how how am I controlling or or what control do I have of when I get these texts and think? Do I have that ability? Is it just an automated thing? And I, you, you hit on it, but go, can you go a little deeper? Sure thing. Yes. Yeah. So, so when when I sign up for a course. Um, I can pick the daily time I receive my texts and the messaging platform. Um, so, you know, if, if I prefer WhatsApp or, or for example, if I'm in, in, uh, in Latin America and don't use SMS as, what, as much, I can, I can pick my platform. Um, and, and at any point, the user can go and change their daily time, right? So, for example, if I, if I was in New York and, and just moved to Los Angeles, I can change my time to, to make it, you know, a little bit later. Um, and then I can also pause my course at any time. Uh, okay. I just by texting stop, and then when I when I when I start it up again, I I, I text start. So it, it's it's pretty seamless. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and in in terms of, and I'm curious. Well, so before we go into this, one other thing we talked about briefly, and I think it's an important to note to have because this is a growing market. Is we're talking about it mainly from like an enterprise standpoint. So yeah, if you have an enterprise and we'll dig deeper into that, how that might integrate into the ecosystem. But one of the other things that as I was doing some research on the platform is really as an individual, you, I mean, potentially this, this is the big thing now, right? People are creating courses and they're trying to sell their courses and things like that as an individual. That's another potential yeah. opportunity or use case for it, not just corporate L&D, correct? Right, exactly. Yeah, I think that the beautiful thing about the Ares platform is that we can spin up an Ares classroom for for anybody instantly. Um, so, so you know, we're we we're really lucky to work with uh, at this point dozens of of uh, you know professors and teachers around the world who are creating their courses on Ares, um, or who are creating supplements to their courses on Ares. Um, you know, we we think that in you know in in Ares course may slot in between like a free webinar that somebody does and like a really comprehensive you know thousand dollar course um and it, it's it's you know it, it's it's a way to to get somebody integrated into your your learning ecosystem and, and getting them started on what you're teaching without having them sit down for 50 hours and, and learn in a really comprehensive manner okay is anybody using this as for marketing i'm just curious like if people are saying like hey as a marketing tool for our stuff will offer courses because people do it all the time. They offer yeah, yeah. webinar things yeah, like exactly. that. You know, is that, and again, this has nothing to do with corporate learning. I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's actually, it, it's funny. So uh, no, I may have just given you another idea. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 No, no, it's, it's an excellent idea. So, so um, no one has used it for marketing. It's like, you know, with our express uh, permission or, 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 you know, with, with, with an express discussion yet, we, we, we did have uh, one user who started using the platform for some, you know, uh, other purpose, um, you know, just, you know, teaching regular courses. 
Um, and then uh, they, I think they ended up meeting a marketing person from the city that they lived in um, okay. and ended up designing a marketing course for their city. Um, wow. So, so now, so now you, can, you can go and take, you know, like a five day course on the city, which I'm not going to name, um, that walks you through like all of the sites and, and the history of the city. It's actually, I took the course. It's pretty cool. Um, okay. so, so yeah, so we, we have seen it used for marketing. I think not in the way that we initially expected. <laughs> You're like, no, we weren't thinking that, but hey, it's awesome. whatever yeah, works, it's, right? It's, yeah. It's, but yeah, there's there's tons of use cases for the platform. Um, and I think okay. one of the things that we we've struggled with a little bit is, you know, narrowing down our focus because because you can, I mean, you can literally use this for, yeah. for anything. So. Yeah, well, I think, right, and I think that's an important piece, and, and it's similar if you're thinking about this from a corporate learning standpoint. It's easy to be like, hey, well, we'll we could use this for this and this and this yeah. instead of saying, hey, let's figure out, let's figure out a use case, let's see it through, let's figure out, you know, what worked, what didn't work before we just go gangbusters and, and try a whole bunch of stuff. So it's interesting that you're dealing with the same thing on the platform side yeah. that I think oftentimes we deal with on the practitioner side. Um, so with that, as we, as we go a little bit further into it and I am curious, well, so let me ask this. So from a, whether it's individual user or, or corporation, how does the licensing, I'm curious how the licensing works in terms of, is it a, you know, consumer of content per consumer per user? Is it a, you know, author structure? H how does that work? And not, we have to, we don't have to get into numbers, but in terms of how does that work? If somebody's trying to think through, okay, I've got this big of an audience. Am I thinking about it? How many creators, what does that look like? Sure thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so our goal is to make it as, as simple as possible. So we've broken it up into, you know, a, a model for companies and a model for, for course publishers. Okay. Um, so for companies, uh, we charge $3 per user per month. Um, okay. and, 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 and it's you know uh, I guess I should go into numbers, but it, it, yeah, that's it's just uh, you know it, it's it's a pretty simple model. And and for for that you get unlimited access to the Ares platform. Um, so that means okay. that your course creators can create unlimited courses, your employees can take unlimited courses. Um, so it, it's pretty it's pretty seamless. And then and then on the course publisher side, um, we yeah we just charge a flat fee every single time somebody takes a course. Um, okay. And what's great is that as a course creator, you know I can offer that course for free as a supplement to my existing courses, or I can offer that course for like, you know, a few hundred bucks if I want. So, okay. Okay. So on the, on the end user side, it's per consumption basically by a learner. If, if it's on the end user side, on the inside, it's how many, you know, people are you creating it for? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, now let's, let's go a little bit into this. And, and again, we, we will dive into the platform a little bit more, but I like to talk about, and we talked about this briefly, some of the challenges or things that, you know, maybe somebody's hearing this going, okay, this is kind of interesting. It's different. Um, what kind of hurdles or, or not necessarily even hurdles, but things should an L and D org prepare for if they're looking at making this transition or, or even trying it? Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so I think, I think one of the biggest hurdles that both we face and that that L and D or, or, or works face um, is the natural skepticism that people have towards text message yeah. learning. I think we find that as soon as somebody tries a course, they're like, "Oh, I get it. This is awesome," and and you know, and, and they're not worried about it anymore. Um, but I think when when users are getting started with it, being extremely clear and communicating very clearly about this is this is what you're going to receive, right? This is the information that we're collecting. Um, so, so one example I'll give is that, uh, you know, one of our clients recently ran uh, an ethics course um, and users were replying, you know, because it's such an intimate medium, users were replying very, very authentically and, and okay. providing really, really meaningful and important case studies of, of, of positive and negative ethical behavior at the company. And this was data that they just had never been able to gather in a survey. Um, Interesting. Yeah, which which was really fascinating. Uh, but the thing is, is that the um, the organization wasn't great, and, and, and you know, this was also something that we learned. We, we needed to be very, very explicit about who was seeing that information, right? So all, all of that data was anonymous. But I think because we didn't explicitly say that this data and, and all of your responses will be anonymous, um, some users were were you know replied and then and then got scared or were hesitant to, to reply. Um, Interesting. So yeah, being very very clear about who's seeing the, the user responses, you know, whether or not this is going to count for some sort of course credit, whether or not it's going to you know, count for a certification of some kind. Um, and, and, then, and then just, you know, in, like encouraging users to, to try it out. Um, one, of the, one of the fascinating things is 
we initially assumed that this was going to be a great fit for for a millennial audience, which it is. You know, millennials okay. are like, absolutely love this. Um, but one thing that we didn't expect is the satisfaction uh, rates for text message learning for people over 55 are actually higher than satisfaction rates for people under 35. That makes sense. Yeah, uh, it was. That, that it, actually doesn't that doesn't surprise me. Actually, just oh, because no, wait, of awesome. no, because again, I think the intuitive nature of right text messaging is it's a familiar. There's not a whole new experience or platform or technology that you have to learn to be right, able to right. do it. So it's like, well, I'm you know I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that versus oh great now I have this new app and I have to figure out you know what's in this app and when do I go to this app and things like that. So it's interesting you found that, but that actually I, that doesn't surprise me. So yeah, huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's that's awesome. That, that's good to hear. But but yeah, but but it, it's fascinating because there is that initial initial hesitation where it's like you know like will will this work for for um, you know a, a fifty five and over audience and um and, and, and so you know it was great to see the, the data validate that, that that it does. But it, but I think you know clear clear communication with text message learning and and being willing to take a risk and try it out. Um, I, th- I think is both of those are really really important things. Okay. So two questions to follow up, uh, you know, as we go into this and then, and then I think it'll make sense to jump into the platform because I want to talk about from an instructional design or a design standpoint, um, what that looks like. But two of them that come to mind is, as I think about, uh, you know, how this fits into the ecosystem piece of it, right? Because it's, it's another, it's another tool, um, that, that, you know, if you're looking at it, you're thinking, okay, how do we integrate this in? What does that look like? Let's say an org has an LMS or an LXP already that's housing their content. How does ours then, then fit in or integrate in a way that doesn't feel like, okay, now we have this other completely separate disconnected thing or how are other orgs dealing with that? Sure thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess a few, a few important things to note. Um, we, we do integrate with single sign-on. Okay. Employees, for example, don't don't have to create a brand new account on Ares. Um, so so that that you know that makes it a lot easier from the user experience point of view. Um, and then and then we are working to integrate with as many learning management systems as possible. Um, okay. And and our our goal is to make it really seamless. Uh, so essentially, an Ares course will show up just like any other course um, in in a learning management system, or you can link to it at the end of a video course if you're doing course reinforcement, for example. Um, and then, you know, the user just clicks through, uh, they're autom- automatically taken to the course signup page, um, for, because of federal privacy laws, the phone verification piece or the account verification piece, it does have to still go through us. Um, but that takes, you know, 20 to 30 seconds. Um, okay. and, then, and then the user, you know, clicks sign up and then they're all, all set. And our goal is also to feed all of the data from the back end back into the LMS. Okay. So that's not currently there, but it's your work that's coming. We're working on it. Yeah. And, and, and already, already, you know, we've had, it's not an official LMS integration, but we've had people just create courses that, that by themselves link out to, to the ARIS platform, uh, okay. you know, in their LMS. And so it's, it's not a formal integration, but, but it works and it's, it's pretty seamless. So, yeah, well, and as I was thinking about it in terms of, you know, just kind of paint the picture of how I see it, at least in current state, I think we've talked about what the roadmap looks like. And I think, you know, you've, you've got, definitely there will be some cool things you'll be able to do with it. But for now, you know, I see it as a, almost a way you, you kind of can link it. I mean, in, in pretty much any system now, you can kind of point people to yeah. something. So if it's a single sign on, it's, Hey, here's part of your learning path. One of your objects is this RS component. You link out, you take care of it. Now in terms of, and that gets to my other question is in terms of the compliance piece, if people were using this for compliance training, and things like that. A lot of times, their LMS is a validated system, or it's a system of record. How right. are you? How are you working with that data then to make sure that it is, you know, stored somewhere? So if somebody you get audited and somebody comes in and says, "Hey, you know, did you do your annual compliance training, or you know, in healthcare Sunshine Act training, something like that?" That you can say, "Yeah," and here's the records. Yeah, no, that, that's an excellent question. Um, I, I may not have the technical clearance to answer that to the okay. best of my ability. <laughs> That's fine. So, yeah, Do your yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, to be completely honest with you, but but um, what, what what I do know is we we use state of the art uh, data storage systems. Um, so we we run on Amazon um, okay. and, and MongoDB. So uh, yeah, so so, so on, on the back end, we're 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 designed to both first for off ensure that data is extremely secure. Um, okay. So you know we 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 have state of the art security. 
Um, and, then, and then, you know, our goal is also to ensure that that, um, that companies have access to the data that they need to, to, to demonstrate compliance at any point in time. Um, that, that's one of the reasons why we go through the phone verification piece, right? So when you sign up for a course, you have to verify your phone or you have to verify your Facebook account. Um, and, and also one concern that I forgot to mention, I think, um, you know, to, to answer your, your previous question, one, one of the biggest concerns that people initially have with text message learning is privacy, right? Yeah. Um, because you, because what's, when you're putting in your phone, you know, you, you know, when you're putting it may in not be a phone, company phone. It may not be a company phone. Yeah. Um, what's, what's, you know, really interesting is that we, because, because users opt in and what we do is we encrypt the user's phone numbers. So neither we as the platform or, you know, your, or the company as, as the user of the platform can see it. Um, we're able to be fully compliant with with federal privacy laws while also letting employees use their own personal phones, okay. um, which which is you know uh, which which it makes makes it really really seamless for both the company and the user. Okay, well, I mean that's right. In terms of some of the skepticism, I, I see this just in with a lot of learning technologies. Right, is the skepticism around who can see who can yeah. see my information and what are they doing with it and a personal phone number is obviously something that for many, you know, are you going to spam me? Am I going to start getting phone calls and things like that? So you're saying that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 the, that's, you know, probably the piece of data that we protect uh, the most. So, okay. Okay. Uh, one, one other question that came in um, from Needy is, uh, you know, in terms of what can come through. So text messaging, obviously text yeah. is a big part of it. One of the other questions was, you know, is it, can you do pictures, videos, like what other type of media can you do? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. So, so you can include uh, images, GIFs. Um, we're working to include short videos and files as well. Uh, already you can link to a file in the, in the text. Um, you can add in hyperlinks. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then in the long run, our goal is to also include audio files. So, so the, okay. the, the, you know, the, the, there's, an, the, 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 there's a lot that you can do in terms of making the text richer. Okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. Well, and you, what's interesting about it, this is, I feel like this is a way underutilized thing, right? With the image, with the image thing, because there's other platforms I've seen and, and other tools I've seen that, you know, they are f more image focused. The animated GIF is yeah. to me, one of the most yeah. underutilized I, yeah, I can things where it's like, you can actually do video through images you just have to know how to use other tools to be like, oh, well, we'll just make, you know, again, we're going to pick that micro moment and turn it into an animated GIF. So yeah. I, I feel like that's, and I don't know, some people say GIF, GIF, I, well, how do you, what do you call it? Uh, I, I think, I think I, I grew up saying GIF, I think. Okay. GIF. I, 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 I also between the two as well. So it's, yeah, yeah. For people who are watching, I'm curious, you just type in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Or, let, yeah. let, let us know, but... Yeah. Well, no, because it just came to mind to me that it's one of those. I've had other instances where that's, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, we want to focus on the image. Like, you can make an image actually pretty dynamic with, yeah. with some, some pretty cool stuff. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the design thing, because to me, having grown up in instructional design, building content, right, this is a shift to go from oh, yeah. what we've been taught, which is as robust and big and verbose as we can make it, you know, as comprehensive as we can make it, 1200 characters, you know, pretend again, you can do it over day, but that's right. That's a different design. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, how, how, how are people handling that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, what we found is that, you know, condensing, condensing lots of content into text message format requires sometimes a completely different skill set than than what most learning designers are used to and it's you know and it's something that that we try to help um and, and that we do help you know every single learning designer and company that we work with learn so we we, we have tons of free guides case studies workshops um etc um but the thing is 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 that yeah i mean, I mean I'll, I'll give you one example um we just worked with with a company um to condense a three hour video course that they had uh, into a series of texts. And we were able to, to convert that three hour video course into six texts uh, with pretty much no, no loss of content. Uh, okay. In fact, we were able to add in some content into the text and ma mainly because we were really? just boiling it down to the, yeah, we were boiling it down to like the main points, the main case studies um, and, and, and not, not adding unnecessary fluff. Um, and, and we find that, you know, employees are busy. Right. Um, and yeah. and for, for, for fast moving work, uh, workplaces, 
um, every every hour counts, and and every hour that a user spends uh, learning something that that they can learn in a faster and more efficient manner um, is is an hour that, that they could be you know being more productive and, and, and working. Um, and so, you know, that, that that's why we firmly believe that condensing information and being very very concise and delivering learning insights in a tightly packaged manner is 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 really really important and it's crazy it's crazy what you can condense uh you know on on our website that we currently offer a um a five-day trial course in architectural history which condenses uh you know like the first month of a wellesley architectural history course uh into five texts uh okay. right and, it, and it, it's great i mean it you know it's it's really really comprehensive and i think i think we've you know in, in learning i i've grown up with with lots of complex learning experiences that don't necessarily generate any actual learning um, and don't generate you know retention and engagement um, and and the, this this is a way of ensuring that like here's this little block and you will you know read and digest and understand this block as best as you possibly can okay well i had and on that note i i think this, this is an important exercise and i don't think you know for people watching if you're in learning and instructional design i don't think that's a skill that you need to wait for text messaging education to figure out. Because I know early in my career, I had a mentor who he did an exercise and I actually still do this right with my teams. It's like, this is how we need to do it is I would write content and he would go, go cut it in half. Yeah. I'm like, what? And then I would do it and he go, go cut it in half again. And he made me do that so that I was forced to just think about how can I say this more simply more concisely. And it was painful. Like at first right. you're like, but yeah. I put all this time into writing all this beautiful content. And now you're telling me cut half of it out. But it was amazing. Like you said, how you can, I mean, so yeah. much of what we do, it is, it's prepositional phrases. It's, it's sentences that aren't really relevant. It's, you know, things like that. How about in terms of conversation? I'm interested in if you've seen a difference or if this is something that you found works better, but with text messaging, when you think about the primary use case for text messaging, it's a conversation between two yeah. people. From a stylistic standpoint, I think sometimes when we design content in our industry, we do it very stuffy and formal. You know, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to blah, blah. And then, right, this is when we get into these verbose things. Is that also something that you find has an impact is, is the style of writing? Without a doubt, yeah. So, so, so one thing that we realized very, very early on is that tone matters a lot. Okay. Um, so yeah, if, if you write a text message course in, in um, you know, in, in boardroom style uh, language, um, you know, where 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 you, you know, it, it just sounds sort of robotic. Um, people are a lot less likely to engage. Uh, the most effective text message courses that we've seen are extremely personal, right? The, the learning designer even sometimes uses their own name and says like, hey, you know, this is Kyla. Um, you know, okay. welcome to to this course, and 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 just offers, you know, it, it sounds like it's coming from a human. Um, which which we think is is generally important, right? In, in learning, right? It, it should sound like it's coming from a human. Um, one one interesting example is we just uh, we just released a GDPR course um, as as a sample. We wanted to see how exciting we could make a GDPR compliance. Um, you know, because it is that is uh, a not, very exciting topic. Exactly. By the way. Yeah, yeah, Let me just it, tell you, I, that is like you know, stay up thrilling all in all nighter uh, on that. Yeah, and and and, and what was awesome is that um, the course. Uh, you know the, the course designer who designed uh, this like 15 day GDPR course. Um, the texts were so funny and so engaging and, and made it seem so relevant. Um, and it's just the tone of it was awesome. Like it, you, you felt like you were texting like 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 a really cool friend. Um, and, and and that made the difference. You know that made the course really really easy to take. It made it really really engaging. Um, and and it, it felt it felt personal and real. Um, and so we find that tone matters a lot. Okay. I, I suspected, but that's where yeah, I was curious if you've actually seen some of that. So let's, do you have the platform? Can we pull it up? And then yeah, I'll, I'm sure I'll have some other questions as we go through it, but we can talk a little bit about, you know, what does this, what does this thing look like? How does it work? All right, let me pull it into the stream here. Okay. So this is on the administrative side, correct? This is, right. this is not the end user. Okay. Right. right. So uh, actually, can you pull up going into a course? Because I'm just curious, yeah. like creating a new course, or if you want to pull up an existing one, I'd love to just see what that looks like. Sure. So, so if, if it helps, I can go through it from the end user's side uh, really quickly. Yeah. And then, okay, okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so, so this is the architectural history course, though, that um, you know I briefly talked about. 
signing up is pretty easy. Um, so you just click enroll and activate. Um, you know, if I, I'm already my, my phone number is already verified, but but if you know if it wasn't, yep. I, I just verify my phone number quickly. Click text message. Let's say I want to get it at 9:30 a.m. Click start, and I'm all set. And now I can change my time, drop out. Um, so I'm, I'm going to drop out of this course. Um, you don't so need more text. You you've got yeah, seven already. Exactly. I'm already yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm already fully loaded. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so, so that that you know, it's really really easy from a user experience point of view. Um, this is uh, the dashboard. This is where course creation lives. Um, and we've sort of broken it down into five pieces. Um, so, you know, there, we have writers, publishers who can edit and publish courses, distributors, so you can distribute courses and analysts. This is where, where all of your uh, data lives and then, you know, the, the admin stuff. Um, so, so uh, do you want me to walk through like the process of just building a course or do you want me to jump into an existing one? Uh, let's, why, why don't we go into one? Cause I think sometimes it's easier to see something that exists versus, you know, okay, we're creating it from scratch and now it's like, you know, lore MIPS, some things like that. Awesome. All right. Let's go through, let's go through the GDPR course actually that, that I just talked about. Um, so this is the really, really exciting course that, that, uh, that I mentioned. All right. Let's okay. check out a day you can just pick one of the so in terms of before you click into it right so i'm looking sure. at it up top i mean in terms of a creation standpoint it's pretty simplistic from what i'm seeing right i mean you're oh, yeah. naming it you're, you're giving it a brief description an image there's not you know programming triggers and variables or anything like that it's it's just some basic data and then if you scroll down it looks like then you're just picking your day right you're yep. saying okay how many days and then we go into the day i'm assuming yes exactly yep yeah, it's Most super, super one. simple. Um, our, our goal is to make it uh, as easy as possible to, to, to create a course. Um, well, one of the really cool things about this is that even after a course is published, you can update information here, right? So if, let's say let's say um, the enforcement, you know, Something laws. changes. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can just, you know, go in, update it, and it takes 30 seconds. Um, versus, what if you know, somebody's enrolled in it? If somebody's already enrolled in it, is it pushing those, if they haven't hit that day yet, will they get the updated content? Yep. Yep. They will. Okay. Yeah. Which, which, which is awesome because that means that your content can stay up to date without having to like reshoot a whole video. Right. Um, so let, let's go through. Well, through text this. is much easier to update than, yeah. than, you know, video, complex e-learning, things like that. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, so th this is a day on enforcement. Um, yeah, we can. I'm with you. I think GIFs are. Um, an extremely underutilized learning tool. Um, and, and also for, for millennial audiences, it's like the absolute best way to get them engaged. Um, um, and then the, you know, this just goes through. Okay. He, he, here's one example of, of the tone, right? There are major fines for organizations that break the rules, and we mean major fines. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just- It's, it's very just personal, people. right? Very it's personal. like, yeah. a con it's the way you would talk to a human being. I, like you said, I feel like sometimes we write like robots and then we wonder why people aren't you know necessarily connecting in a meaningful way right exactly exactly and it, this just speaks to people you know in, in the language that we use on an everyday basis um and so and yeah the assessment know, piece i see so if you're going to add a question you do that on a day by day basis correct exactly yeah so so, so in this and again you know it, it depends on we, we give the learning designer flexibility to do it how they want. So okay. occasionally some learning designers like having no assessments until like day seven, right? And then they just have a mat, like, you know, like 10 multiple choice questions on day seven, sort of like a quiz. Um, yeah. So it's sort of up to you. Um, the, the, this course, because um, it, it's a demo course, uh, you know, we, we, we don't have assessments built in. Um, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, you know. Can you, you click you can... on add? I'm just curious though. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you can um, hyperlink to things too. If you put a link in there, you can exactly. link people out to something. Yeah, automatically hyperlinks everything. Um, let's say we want to make a open edit question. You know, what's your favorite part about GDPR? Um, and then There's we so you know, many things. That's a tough question. There's so exactly, many things exactly, that are, yeah. I just love about it. Right, right. That's that's the usual response we get. That's and, yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure that's what everybody says. Exactly. Um, and, and that, then, while you're doing that, because sure. I'm just kind of thinking in real time here as we do. So open ended, right? Because this is one of the things I think can be challenging, or not challenging, but is a limitation. Is a lot of times we think of assessment just as knowledge retention right so multiple choice hey here's the thing like that now with an open-ended you could have a more action oriented where you could direct somebody 
I mean, again, you'd have to maybe think about it a little differently, but that could almost be more of a call to action than a question and asking for feedback or response, correct? Because that what they respond comes back to you, yes? Correct, correct. Yeah, so, so one example is, you know, in, in the financial literacy course that I showed earlier, um, users are prompted to to have a money book where, where they, you know, they write down all of their transactions and, and reflect on their experiences. Um, and, 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 you know, in that case, the open-ended question, uh, open-ended, you know, question is, is sort of a prompt for action. Um, we, 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 we love, we love the learning model of, you know, learn a little bit, uh, use it in real life and, and act on it and then reflect on it. So, okay. So one question, and I, and this may be something, so the little I'm seeing this, and this may not be ours. Cause I actually have noticed this more and more in my stuff in the content. You've got the little smiley face thing. Do you have Grammarly? I do have Grammarly. Yeah. Okay. Cause that's what, cause I I've noticed more, I get feedback on like, Hey, you wrote that too stern or too firm you know, lighten it up and make it warm and fuzzy. And your guy's giving a little smiley face. Oh, so no I'm way. Thinking, oh, that's so cool. Oh, from yeah, that, that's awesome. I've actually, that's right, and now we aren't talking about Grammarly on here, but I've actually noticed that that's been helpful for me when I'm writing stuff. It actually tells me like, eh, it's a little too stern or whatever. So there you go. Okay. That's awesome. Completely that's so separate. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, but, but actually, okay. yeah, that's very cool. I, I, I think it'd be really interesting to formally integrate Grammarly as well. That, that's, a, that's a great idea. Um, that, you know, uh, now we're seeing it, but I mean, I think that type of thing, because one of the questions Chris Barker asked is, right, does Arist help or do you have the capability to help an organization kind of do that contextualizing and cutting down the content? Or is that on the organization to kind of navigate through? And I'm just curious your take on that. Yeah, without a doubt. So, so we actually have, we have a whole content team. Um, and so okay. we, there's, there's sort of three ways that you can do it, right? The first one is, um, we, you know, we, we train your team or, or offer a workshop um, and then just okay. offer, you know, like edits here and there when needed. Um, you know, option two is, we, we, you know, we, we also have a lot of guides um, and case studies that we can send along. And then uh, option three is uh, we'll, we'll, we'll very often have uh, learning teams send us just wholesale content, right? So send us like, like 10 hours of video or send us a ton of PowerPoints and then we'll condense that information for them. Um, into text message format. Um, so we, we, we can do we can do all of that for the organization too. Okay. But to be clear though, that's not necessary, right? That's a separate service or an add-on to just the platform. Or do you, is that just like, yeah, we'll yeah. do that. Yeah, okay. it, it is pretty labor intensive. So <laughs> Make we, sure we want to be clear yeah, on that kind of, since right. we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael said you would do all of our content consolidation for free. For free, um, yeah, that is, no, that, that's a, You'd that's be in big trouble point. right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, that, that, that's a great point. It, it, yeah, it, it is an extra service, um, but but it, it does, yeah, um, that, 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 that is one option. Our, 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 right. our goal, however, is, to, you know, maybe over the course of, of, you know, the deployments over the course of the first year, eventually you get to the point the learning team is fully versed in designing text message courses. Um, okay. so, so oftentimes we see it, you know, we'll design the first few and we'll condense the first few and then eventually we'll, we'll train the team. and Basically and teaching them how to fish. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So that is a service that if somebody says, hey, we, this is something we need help with, we're looking at the platform to, yes, you can get the platform, but you also have the capacity and capability to help an organization kind of on that journey with the ultimate goal that they aren't, you know, coming back to you. I mean, from the platform standpoint, uh, it's not like, oh, we made a course. We need you to come make some edits to it. This is pretty simple in terms of making updates. Right, right. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and our, you know, we, we've gotten pretty good at, at really, really efficiently designing text message courses too. So, you know, we, our turnaround time is like two to five days. Sometimes it's, it's like even less. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and I mean, I think that that speaks to one of the, what, what we find is the most compelling aspect of text message learning, right, is that you can design a course in two hours, right, um, from scratch versus, versus you know, sometimes we've heard people spend 50 plus hours designing video courses. Um, so so it, it, it is a really, really efficient medium, both from the learning designer's perspective and from the end user's perspective. Okay. That, that brings up that brings up a question actually that you say, and I'm interested what your experience has been, because I think there is a little bit of one of the challenges with some of these tools that make it so easy to design content is some of the lost kind of need for not necessarily need, but right. There is something to be said about somebody with 
you know, experience and background in instructional design, looking at, okay, hey, here is how we architect this. And I've seen this with simple tools in the past where it's just like, well, great, we can make anybody an author and they can create a course and they just throw it together and you go, well, I mean, you made something, it's something, you know, but, you know, so how do you balance that where, you know, you're not just kind of letting it turn into the wild, wild west where people are just making whatever, because then you run the risk of spam, right? Right, right. Um, yeah, so, so I think r right now the way we're approaching that is by offering really, really, really detailed okay. course guides, course creation guides and, and examples and case studies. Um, we've actually found, you know, we, we've had students create courses and have compared them with with courses made by learning designers. And okay. they're actually, you know, ob obviously the, the learning, the courses made by learning designers have a bit more nuance and, 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 and are a bit more complex and, and, and a bit more effective. Um, but but it's, it's a lot, the, the level of quality is a lot closer than you think. Especially okay. because I think when when you get to the twelve hundred character range, that's really really forcing the user to condense things very effectively. Yeah. Um, right, so, whether you're an instructional designer or not, right? That's pushing anybody to really think carefully about, you know, what are you putting in there? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and and, and there's you know, it, it also limits spam, so you're you're not getting like you know, like huge 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 text. Right. Okay. But you, yeah, there's that guideline of don't make a six month course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 150 day course because you go, well, we have to get all 300 PowerPoint slides into here. So we'll just go from, we'll go out, you know, half a year to spread it out. Right, right. Yeah, no, we, we don't recommend that. And, um, and you know, and the, the great thing is that if, if I'm the end user, if, if I'm realizing that a course is taking too long or if it's not super interesting, you know, I can just text stop and I'm all, and I'm all set. Um, so that, that also works for spam prevention. Okay. Okay. Um, there was one other thing that I was thinking about that I was going to ask you, and now I'm not sure if I can remember what it was, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think this is, this has been great, Michael. I appreciate you. Know, I remember when we first talked, um, you know, back, I think it was what last September or something like that when we first started talking about, it. I think it's just, sometimes I feel like so many people, and I wrote about this in the post, right? So many people are pursuing the quickest or the latest and stuff. And sometimes it's the simplicity of things that are in place that actually have the biggest impact. So I, I yeah. think that was what really grabbed me about the uniqueness of it. And it doesn't, it doesn't hurt that you've got a pretty compelling story of, you know, I think one of the things that a lot of times we can do a better job of focusing on is what problem is this tool designed to solve? And, and really, I mean, you designed it around a problem that you saw when you were doing what you do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, awesome. we're, we're, we're really excited about it. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks thanks for being here. For those of you watching, if you are interested in learning more about Aris, whether for your organization or just individually, I will put a link in the post and all the subsequent posts so that you can you know get in touch, things like that, or reach out to me directly. Um, so, so thanks for being here, Michael. Uh, again, everybody watching, like, share, comment let people know about the show the goal of the show is really not necessarily to push a product but to help you better understand what these technologies are how they work and how really you can use them together uh, to, to build an awesome learning and development organization so thanks for being here everybody oh we have one last thing before i go for those of you tuning in uh starting next week this is an important note we won't be on tuesdays anymore i'm moving to friday so next tuesday there won't be a show, but I'll put plenty of posts out there so people know. Um, but we're moving to Friday, so you'll have a nice uh, Friday morning show to tune into. So thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for being here, Michael. And uh, we will see you all next week. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much. See ya.